Well, we're here to really, I think, uh, celebrate this kind of process. I mean, besides providing a home for, for this family, um, there's been a really interesting set of events that led to making this possible. And uh, it's just kind of cool to say, see the way that, that God has, has worked through this to, to meet a need for some uh, people connected uh, with uh, Lutheran Church Charities. They eventually told me <clears throat> after he'd been there a couple weeks, um, it's okay. He had like a 50-50 shot at making it. To have to explain to the kids that there's a very good possibility that, um, that their dad's not gonna come home <laughs> is one of the absolutely <clears throat> hardest things that I've ever had to do. My boys, they looked at me and my oldest, Cole, <laughs> he looked at me and he goes, Mom, I, I think we need to pray. <laughs> And I was like, I think that is a fantastic idea. Matthew's case manager in um, St. Louis, she said that Northwestern uh, was very interested in Matthew for a lung transplant. And she said Matthew would need a, like a double lung transplant. I tell you, this has been the roughest thing I've ever gone through my entire life. By this time, I had had to quit my job because I had told um, I told them, I said, like, there's a very good possibility we're going to be in Chicago. When I got up here, I worked with a realtor to see if we could find an apartment, a house, anything. And, you know, not knowing what kind of income we were going to have or anything like that, people were very reluctant to rent. So I reached out to our friend, uh, Jennifer, and she's got the connections up here through MEND. And um, I was like, Jen, I need help. As I look at how the, the house here at uh, Trinity became available for the McMillan fan, it's amazing how God draws all the pieces together because it was through Mend that Kim had heard this story about this family. So Kim, having the heart that she has, began to work on this project very quickly. I was connected through the fa to the family through the MEND organization, which is a uh, grief support system for parents who've lost babies. Uh, their best friend is a MEND leader. She reached out to our core team and said, we need prayers. A few months later, she said, they're being uh, flown to uh, Chicago. So can our Chicago leaders, can, is there anything you can do to help the family? They don't even know where to go. The McMillans were pretty much resigned. They'd be living in a hotel for the rest of the year. So a couple of days later, I got a call from Kim. So I didn't realize that Kim was still doing all this behind the scenes stuff. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And at that point you just, I told him, I said, well, I guess, I guess we'll just be living in a hotel for, you know, however long we have to be here. And uh, so then that's just kind of where I was with it. Um, I, was, I was getting frustrated with trying to find anything. It was by virtue of her connecting Lutheran Church Charities that Diana Bonfield got involved and just more people talking about the same story until God absolutely opened the door to uh, this congregation and, who had an empty parsonage and it wasn't being used. So Diana called me really out of the blue and asked whether we would consider renting our house uh, for, this, uh, for this family uh, to live in for, for some months. And I said, you know, that really isn't possible. And then it occurred to me that, that the church Jackie and I attend, which is Trinity Galewood, had a next door house, the former parsonage that uh, was empty. And so I talked to, um, to Pastor Eric about whether, whether this would be a possibility or not. And I put him in contact with Diana and it just, uh, just moved from there. Mark tells me the full story and uh, of this family looking for a place to live and ends up connecting me to Diana at Lutheran Church Charities. And as she's talking to me, I'm thinking, this is a beautiful dream. There's no way this is coming true, but I'll show you the house anyways. 
And when Diana and John came to meet me in this house, I was ready for that meeting to be 10 minutes long and for them to say, oh, thank you so much for your kindness, we'll keep looking. And instead they go, this place looks great, can they move in? Then when Kim called me and said, hey, we have a parsonage house um, that they would be willing to let you live in, um, do you want to come look at it? And I'm like, sure, yeah. And um, this is, it's an amazing house. I mean, absolutely floored. And um, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll clean it up and we'll paint. I'm like, you don't have to do anything. I mean, anybody else would have walked through this and, and be given the timeline of two weeks to get this family into this house. You probably would have, you know, said, well, there's got to be a better option. One of the beautiful things about following Jesus is that he's constantly asking us into the impossible. Leave what you know and come with me. And here we have a family who is leaving what they know and pursuing something where they don't know what the answers are. And they're joining us, a church, who did not know that this could be possible and joining with us in something that now is possible. We were able to uh, find lots of volunteers, do a lot of cleaning, a lot of patching, repairs, and two and a half weeks later, we were able to pass the keys to the McMillans and turn over a very beautiful home. I have seen God at work in this place with each volunteer who shows up and does work. Each volunteer has put work into this place that this family will feel the love having never met them. And this is the love that God has called us to, to love one another. What it does for me is it reminds me of the first church in Antioch, when Christians come together, when people sold possessions and gave it not on faith alone. So to know that a group of brothers and sisters have come together to do the very thing that was commanded is very enriching. So to see Christians behaving as Christians should behave, it's very uplifting, it's very encouraging. It brings back that hope, not the hope that we hope they will, but hope in what we have. You know, really, if you think about it, what are you gonna take with you? Other than the joy, or the joy of spreading God's word and doing works for the Lord. Those works definitely bring glory and honor to God. So we saw God work in a lot of different ways, and, uh, and as He always does, which is an absolutely beautiful thing when your eyes are open to see it.